Hey guys, so I wanted to do a follow-up video after we did the guide on Zane, where I spoke a lot on whether he's any good, he could be one of the strongest or one of the weakest, it's still hard to say. Now that the game's been out a couple of days and I've had a good amount of time to play Zane, get him to level 50 and start doing Mayhem Frey stuff like in the background, I kind of wanted to talk about where he's good and how he compares to the other Vault Hunters because I think there is a bit of a distinct difference between him and the others. And not in a good way. Is Zane a lot of fun to play and is worth playing? The answer for that is yes. He is very fun, he plays a lot differently to everybody else, and his mannerisms of the character that he is, is a lot of fun to be around, to be fair. I enjoy playing him a ton. Is he as strong as the other Vault Hunters? Now this is kind of like the yes but actually no meme, because I do think that he brings a lot to the table, but there are some significant areas where I feel that he's been undertuned a little bit, making him worse than the others. The other Vault Hunters in the game are more defined. You kind of know what you're getting with each of the skill trees and how to build and play as the Vault Hunter in general. Amara has a melee build, an element build, Mercer's explosions, regenerating ammo, keeping your shield high but your health low to increase damage, and there's a lot of shields, class mods, grenades and weapons that synergize and complement what you're trying to do. Zane does have that as well, but more often than not, I find his class mods or shields, artifacts, weapons sometimes, completely going against the builds that you were trying to run. And I kind of wanted to use a few examples in this video. I just seen some pretty interesting gameplay in the background. I'm not gonna sit here and say that he's a trash Vault Hunter, you shouldn't play him, he's not as good as the other ones, whilst you're watching some Proving Grounds gameplay on Mayhem 3, where I'm just blasting through the majority of people in the background. Speaking of which, I might as well show you that build just in case you wanted to try it yourself. This is the class mod that makes it. Don't worry, we will be coming back to this as this is really important to my point. But weapon damage and movement speed are increased the lower your shield is, the greater the bonus. Whenever you activate an action skill, you also break your shields. I've paired this up with the Rough Rider, which is a shield with a capacity of zero. You see where the synergy comes in quite nicely. You also get incoming damage uh, reduced by 23%, as well as 35% maximum health. I also added in a nice artifact on top just to give me a little bit more fight for your life duration in case I need it, but also a bit more maximum health. So you have some nice synergy going between the three. Going back to the gameplay, you can see how strong it is. I'm using a fire weapon because obviously it's good against flesh and also because the mayhem mode modifiers didn't affect it at all. And it also increased my assault rifle damage, which is even better. So as you've seen on screen, there's some really nice synergy and I'm just tearing it up on the hardest difficulty in the game. Granted, we're not in true Vault Hunter mode, but you get the point. It's still very good in this situation. But like I said, there are some synergies that just don't work with Zane, and I want to come back as well to this class mod that I'm showing you, because here's a really good example. So the whole idea of this is you want to keep your shields as low as possible in order to increase your weapon damage and movement speed. And this is helped by the fact that whenever you activate an action skill, you break your shields. But the problem that I have is this kind of goes against Undercover as a whole, where you even have two talents where it's based on having your shields as full as possible. Adrenaline is the first one, where your action skill cooldown rate is increased based on how full your shields are. Then you have Confident Competence, where your gun damage and your accuracy is increased again based on how full your shields are. You even have Barrier Augments, which increase your shield recharge delay, health regen, to make sure that you're topping yourself up as you go along. It's a really nice build that I often found myself running on Zane, where it's all about just having those abilities to up your shield regen as much as possible. Not only for, you know, keeping yourself alive, but also bits like Calm, Cool, Collected, which we'll go over towards the end of this video, because I do want to touch on how good that is. Not to mention that I have the Guardian rank point of Top Top, where your action skill cooldown rate is increased while at full shields. So that's why I'm able to get my abilities back in like four seconds straight because I'm able to dedicate points to this, keep my shields at full health, which decrease the cooldown of my abilities, but also the damage that I do as a whole. That's a lot of things synergizing together that want me to keep my shields high. Then I have class mods that want me to keep my shields low. And that seems to be the theme of Zane and the problems that I have. It's not necessarily the class mods that I have a problem with. I haven't seen them all, so there might be ones that are perfect for me. I might go into the game after making this video and find one straight away that is exactly what I hoped it would be. All about increasing my shields as much as possible and gaining benefits based on how fully charged my shields 
that. That's not really what I'm highlighting. But this kind of thing for Zayn happens quite a lot. Another really good example of this is in the talent tree doubled agent with the capstone. You have double barrel, which for those that don't know, when you have this capstone unlocked and you have an amazing legendary weapon, let's say, equipped, you activate the digiclone. That clone will also have whatever legendary weapon that you have, which sounds amazing. It's like the possibilities are endless with whatever weapons that the digiclone can hold. The whole tree is dedicated to making digiclone as strong as possible, as well as providing bits and pieces of utility and survivability here or there. It's mostly about increasing the damage of the digiclone. So even with all of this in a legendary weapon, does that mean that their DPS output is going to be just as good as yours? Or at least close? And that's the problem. It's really inconsistent. In fact, Seagull, who is an Overwatch streamer by trade and has been playing a lot of Borderlands 3 like myself, hit the nail on the head when talking about it on his stream here. I would describe it as because of the clone's attack pattern, certain guns have to be used in order for it to be good. So a lot of the time it becomes harder to search because the pool is so much less than just like a normal good gun. So like would normal people would just be like, oh, I just have to have a good radiation gun this th for this fight and we'll be fine because they're weak to that or whatever. I have to be like, oh, I have to have a good radiation gun that happens to be one of these three burst fire weapons or this other type or this other type, not just a good weapon period it has to be a good weapon that the clone can use and so it like adds another layer of annoyance so that's an element that makes Zane really frustrating is you just don't know what legendary weapons are going to work with the clone to get the most output it's not straightforward it's not clear cut and it's the same as well when you look into the bottom of the tree of distributed denial which is in undercover where the barrier the shield ability that you use will have the same effects as your shield mod so that's another ability that is completely dependent on how good your shield mod is. The Digiclone is dependent on how good the legendary gun that you give them is. It's the same here for the barrier and the shield mod. I was talking to Lazy Data about it a couple of days ago as well, and one area that might make Zane really interesting is a grenade build, where you can have your sentinel dropping grenades, you can fire grenades randomly with some talents, and increasing your grenade regen, just throwing out grenades all the time, just as much as most does. But again, that depends on what grenade that you have. And that's pretty much the case across the board for Zane. Where you have other Vault Hunters that have class mods, shields, all those bits and pieces that either synergize or just coexist with certain elements of your playstyle. For example, you might be running an Amara build and you might have, I don't know, like an artifact that just reduces the damage that you take. It doesn't really help with your build. It doesn't increase your melee damage or your element damage, but it's still good to have. Whereas for Zane, it feels that like it either really synergizes or it completely clashes with what you're trying to do. Making it so min max and Zane becomes incredibly difficult and quite frustrating in a lot of areas. Because Zane is the most versatile character with the way that you can make hybrid builds and the fact that he has two abilities, it's meant that he's so versatile it's hard to make a defined playstyle and really focus on an element of his play without aspects of his kit clashing with one another. It's like he's been really picky with what gear suits him. Even stuff that is literally made for him like class mods go against other elements of his talents, his abilities and him as a playstyle in general. Let's compare that with Stalker Flak, where it's all about increasing your crit damage and hitting an enemy boss or somebody in a proving ground really hard. It's all just about having a good legendary gun and having that synergize with your ability. That's the only synergy that you really need to make that build work. But for Zane, he has to have his grenades, he has to have his class mod, his shields, all of the guns that he has equipped, his artifacts, all pointing in the same general direction with what they want to do, which is really frustrating at the moment, especially leveling him and building him when we don't know what legendary class mods are out there, grenades and stuff, it's very difficult for us to really have that agency to chase pieces. Whereas in comparison to Amara, you can kind of make anything work, but build it towards a specific playstyle. This will get better as time goes on, as we start to find out what is out there and how to get it. But certainly leveling Zane first and getting all the gear on him has been sort of awkward in positions. There are builds that you can make, you've seen examples of that on screen, like with the Proving Grounds one. It's not that he's a bad Vault Hunter to play, not by 
by any stretch of the imagination, but getting to this point on screen was very awkward. That process is going to be quite slow in comparison to everybody else. But coming back to this gameplay, this also highlights another area that I often struggle with with Zane, and it also brings us on to Cam Cool Collected as a build idea. The general build that people have been throwing around, not only has Baru highlighted it, but I've seen it in countless places, is the idea based around this talent, where reading it out, whenever Zane freezes an enemy, his shields instantly begin recharging, unless they're full, in which case you regenerate health for a few seconds, unless your health is also full, in which case your action skill cooldown and duration are immediately reset, which basically means that you can have a 100% uptime on your abilities, like you were seeing on screen in this circle of slaughter gameplay, just showing you that it works. You know, like it's actually been used here. We're seeing a huge amount of uptime on the clone and the other bits and pieces of kit that I'm using. But this is the other problem I have with Zane, and that's just how modifiers can really mess with you. Not only do you have the mayhem mode modifiers that can reduce the cryo damage that you want to do, meaning that it's very difficult to make this build work when you're built around just doing ice damage and suddenly the mayhem mode has decided that it's going to reduce cryo damage by 50 percent you're in a lot of trouble you've built it in a way that you can't really go out of you can have enemy badasses that are immune to frost and also your clone could just die meaning that even if you had a 100 percent uptime of the ability you can still lose it in a lot of cases but one thing that you'll also notice from the gameplay is just how short of a cooldown i have the clone on anyway so this whole build isn't really necessary if you're building it around adrenaline which to remind you is increasing your action skill cooldown rate with your shields being as full as possible but also as well the top tough talent in the guardian rank which increases cooldown rate when you're at full shields my whole game plan in this was to keep my shield charge up and i can spam my abilities as much as i want if you don't have that guardian rank point then sure it makes a lot of sense to maybe try that but in areas like proving grounds circle of slaughter and especially boss battles where you can't actually freeze the target i don't think that this build is necessary Necessary. It's still a strong build, having all of the synergy with freezing targets and doing ice damage, sure, but I wouldn't say that it's necessary, and, and because of that I don't think it's worth trying to play this build in general. The issue is, is this is the only sort of concrete synergy build that you can make with Zane, you know, synergizing all of your ice damage, finding a good ice legendary gun, artifacts that increase ice damage that you do and the potency of it. But if you run into difficult modifiers or mayhem mode, or just difficult mobs, very difficult to make this work. And that's kind of the problem with the stuff that I'm running on the Proving Grounds gameplay that I showed you to begin with. What if we had a mayhem mode modifier that decreased fire damage? I mean, granted, you could just quit out of the game and go back in to get new modifiers, but you see the point. The game can easily screw you with Zane, no matter what you're trying to do and how you're trying to build. Whereas Amara, you just want to do elemental melee damage, you have less to worry about. For Zane, it's about how much elemental damage to do, how much normal damage you want to do, the weapon that you want to try and use, how much you're relying on your abilities versus you just doing damage. If you're gonna build melee, which is something you can do, how fast you wanna move, all of these are things that Zane players need to consider. And as you start climbing into the higher mayhem mode ranks, it's something that you have to wrestle with on a lot of occasions. Now the flip side to that is when I actually managed to work out this build that you're seeing on screen, it felt really good. I didn't follow a guide online to make this build. It was something that I created with the bits of gear that I had. I created this build and found the synergies between them to make something really strong. And I felt really accomplished after I managed to do that. I went through a lot of time and effort to make this build work. Whereas for somebody like Amara or Flack, it's a lot easier, it's a lot more straightforward to do that. I guess what I'm trying to say is the smartest players play Zane. And if you can make him work with the bits of gear that you find, it's a very fulfilling feeling, but it is really damn frustrating to get there. I'm not gonna lie. Zane is the hardest to make work right now. I kinda wanted to talk about the concerns and problems that I have with him going forward, but you're seeing it on screen. In the background, how strong he can be in the right hands, and how fast, mobile, and damage output, the abilities that he has, the utility that he brings, it's ridiculous but you have to dedicate a lot of time to working that out and getting there. Thanks for watching, a bit of a longer video. I didn't want to mope around. I didn't want to sound miserable talking about Zane being trash. I hope that's not how it came across, but hopefully you understand where Zane is running into problems. Maybe to the point the Gearbox might have to do something about it, providing a couple more class mods that do certain things. I don't know at this point. It's still very early days. I'm not going to ask for buffs or nerfs. This isn't Overwatch. This isn't a Risa or whatever. But I did want to talk about this, as it's been bothering me pretty much all weekend. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.